Well, hello everybody and welcome to G-Bear's Missing Video. <laughs> yeah, I haven't posted in a few days. Well, yesterday I had company and uh, day before that, I forget what it was, winds and cold and rain and all kinds of other stuff that was keeping me from getting outside and doing a video. So, I got a request from Tony of doing redneck things off grid with Tony and Leanne. Um, I think they took the with Tony and Leanne off the end, so it's doing redneck things off grid is their uh, channel. Go over, tell them I sent you. Uh, say hi, give them a subscription. They're trying to get up there. They're in the 700s or something like that. And uh, they need to get a little bit higher before they can monetize. So give them a hand. I mean, subscribe. It won't hurt you. Their, their channel's free also. <laughs> so anyway, you guys uh, had enough of this? They were running around yesterday with my company's dogs. And uh, they covered a lot of desert. All right. Let's get to Tony's... Uh, questions. Tony's questions were about installing my tankless water heater, propane tankless water heater. And I'll be going in to show you that in a minute, but I wanted to start outside here because he sent some pictures of uh, uh, some of the work he's already started with his outdoor water piping. Okay, so here, schedule 40 PVC. Okay, it doesn't hold up the hot water, so don't use it for hot water. It also doesn't hold up to freezing. Now, you say, well, why do you have it outside and not worried about it freezing? Simple answer. See, this valve is open. That valve is open. That valve is closed, the one on the end. So when this ice, uh, when water freezes and turns to ice, it expands. So it's got a place to expand to inside of the tank. So it's not going to be able to make enough pressure to break the pipe. So you got to remember that. Now if I shut those two valves off, the water that's in that pipe will freeze tonight when it gets down below 32 and that pipe will be broken in the morning. So that's a, that's a concern. So what do you do about it? Well, insulation. Uh, is okay as long as you don't get a deep freeze down into the 20s and things like that because that's still going to cause a problem. Here on my Totkuzi, I got a broken pipe down there. Well, this happened a month ago. And why? Well, I had the valve down there shut off because I'm catching rainwater in here for the winter. And I had this valve shut off. It's open now. Well, the water froze in there and broke that pipe. So that's what I'm talking about. If you shut it off on both ends and you have nowhere for that water to expand to, it, it, it will blow the pipe apart. So that being said, let's move on. We'll start outside. I've got to go inside to show you how the water heater connects. Um, an alternative to um, Schedule 40 PVC is to use Shark Bite. Now, don't try th thinking that copper is going to get you away with it either. Because copper will uh, freeze, expand, and break on you just like um, PVC will. But you can use uh, copper on the hot water side indoors. Okay. So he wanted to know all about everything about connecting the um, hot water heater. Up there on the roof, that silver one right there. Okay, that's a windproof, rainproof um, um, cap, if you want to call it. Now, I don't think we can see it here, but down against the shingles, it has a flashing. And the flashing has to fit under the shingles in such a way, so it's just like another shingle, and water runs around the pipe and off the roof and not down alongside of the pipe. That's very important. The pipe, the exhaust pipe on this, is called B-Vent. Letter B-Vent. That's a double-walled vent pipe. The reason you want that is because when you're using hot water, the, 
gas flame is burning inside that unit and putting hot air out uh, on a regular constant basis coming up that uh, smokestack and that will get pretty hot. The so bee vent is a double wall. It has an inside pipe and then it has a space, an air space, and it has an outside pipe. And it also has interlocking joints. The interlocking joints keep it from shaking and vibrating and coming apart at the uh, joints. And you want that, especially if you're in a wind prone area like I am. But the B vent is a requirement, it's a code requirement for just for um, water heaters and uh, things like that. So, all right, we're indoors. So, here's my water heater. This is a propane tankless water heater. And no, those are not eyes that come with it. Uh, Harbor Freight free lights, I have them all over the place. And if, uh, um, and wait a minute, I don't get power outages. <laughs> anyway, there's the B-Vent. Now you notice I taped the joints at all joint intersections. Um, that tape is not just regular aluminum tape. It's uh, You find it in the big box stores or your hardware store along with where the B-Vent is. This is heat resistant tape. It's designed for using whether you're going to have um, hot uh, temperatures on the pipe. Uh, it doesn't melt the glue and fall off. It's, it, it stays in place. All right. Now up at the top, you see that metal pat flashing I put there. That's because it's a little bit too close to the wood um, crown molding that I have. And then going through the wall is a special um, spacer unit uh, it's got a pipe in the center of it about the same size as the uh, stack pipe that I'm using, or the B-Vent. And then it's got about an inch and a half space to the outside. I've got another piece of metal around there. It goes through the wall, and it acts as a buffer so that the hot pipe doesn't heat up any flammables inside the wall. Now, if you're going up straight through the ceiling and then up through the roof, then you would still use one of those at the ceiling and then another one at the roof, okay? Um, the reason I went through the wall here is because when I first came out here originally, this, uh, this one room was my cabin and I didn't have a table here. I had my bed there, okay? so. Um, a single bed right there where I used to sleep and then I had my kitchen and that stuff for, uh, for cooking and doing that stuff. And I used to stand in a, um, a mortar mixing plastic tray right there and take a shower at the sink. And this, uh, this is one of those pullouts right here. All right. So let's see next. Um, yeah, we can go into the bathroom and see the rest of the pipe before I go on. Okay, so there's the pipe comes through the wall and goes up through the ceiling. And you can see that same, um, uh, metal flashing on there that I put. And then the uh, metal flashing on this wall to prevent the heat from getting to anything that's flammable. And then if you could get up in the attic, you would see that there's another one of those up at the roof where it goes through the roof. All right, so they like you to stay like six inches away from flammables with the pipe. But uh, because I couldn't at this instance, I actually had to um, use those extra flashings. So um, gas. Gas comes in on, an, uh, on a half inch galvanized or black pipe. You can use uh, either galvanized or black pipe. A black pipe is usually used for gas, but if you needed a nipple or something or a, um, a, an elbow, you could use a uh, black pipe mixed with the um, galvanized. Um, they are compatible, so you, you can use them. Of course, most people use galvanized uh, pipe for water only, so uh, the plumber can look at it and say, well, that's not gas, that's water. Uh, 
it's up to you whatever you want to do okay now i use this as a place to hang a towel you see i put a loop in the bottom of the uh, gas flex line you, you want to have one of those in your system because um, condensation can build from hot and cold and so forth and so on so your propane tanks are outside and they're cold and of course the um uh, LNG or the liquefied natural gas or LPG liquid liquefied propane gas is uh, ice cold so when that's coming through the pipe and it gets in here to the warmth you get condensation build up in your line so you want to trap down there to catch that condensation keep it from going up into your unit you do have to use a half inch um, uh, flex hose for coming into the unit because it needs that much volume. All right, hot and cold water, shark bite. I can't say it enough, shark bite. Not PVC, not copper, um, not galvanized. You can use copper and galvanized indoors. Of course, there's no problem with that. But if your heat goes out, and your pipe freezes, then you're going to be tearing the walls open to get to the pipes to replace them or repair them. Shark bite holds up very, very well in cold, freezing temperatures. I've got shark bite outside, um, only buried a foot underground, coming off my water tank all the way to my uh, cabin, and well, actually it goes into the garage first to the water pump, and it comes to the cabin from there, and it holds up to the freezing temperatures. So shark bite okay now these are shark bite fittings there they come in brass and i, I put these little uh, colored tie ties on there so i know which one is hot and which one is cold without having to go down underneath there and look up to see what was printed on the unit okay so um shark bite here is shark bite this is shark bite half inch pipe says right on it shark bite okay now you can use pex pipe but it's not as good as shark bite in cold weather shark bite fittings okay they have a little plastic insert inside of there that fits inside of the pipe and then the plastic on the outside of the pipe goes along the outside but down inside here there's a stainless steel thing with teeth on it so when you push this on and push it all the way in and seat it, those things grab into the plastic and it can't pull off. Okay, they do make a special little plastic tool, a little um, horseshoe shaped thing that you snap around the, the pipe and then squeeze it and it pushes this plastic right here in, let me get that in frame, and that releases the, um, the teeth in there that uh, do the holding so you can take it apart anytime you want <coughs> no soldering uh no heat no none of the none of that stuff and when you buy your shark bite uh at the uh, big box store i got mine at home depot when you buy it there they have special tools all the special tools you need for this the cutter for cutting these perfectly square. You don't want an angle cut on those. They have to fit in there properly. Okay. So you want a, a nice square cut when you cut it. Uh, you get the cutter. It's not expensive. Then they have a reamer. And the reamer takes the sharp edge off the outside of this unit. Okay. The inside, I guess they don't worry about that. Because uh, it fits around the... A plastic bushing that's inside of there but the outside if it's too sharp it uh, grabs when you're trying to push it in when you're pushing them in you want to make sure they go all the way in and seat okay now they do sell shark bite pipe in both um, blue and red colors and white and uh, if you wanted you could get a blue pipe and a red pipe, and they sell it in uh, shorter lengths. You can buy it in uh, uh, like uh, three foot, six foot lengths, things like that, 10 foot lengths. So you can just measure how much you're gonna need and, and get it. Now they make um, elbows, <clears throat> they make hose bib fittings, they make uh, faucet fittings, 
All kinds of fittings that you need are there in shock bite. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> <clears throat> I got a frog in my throat, said Miss Piggy. <clears throat> anyway, um, yeah, so that's it. That's how you install a thing. Now, <clears throat> one last thing. You do need a gas cock on here. Okay, that's if you have a problem, you can shut it off quickly right here and stop the gas from going in. Same thing with the wall heater. Got a gas cock down there. All right, so that's all there is to it, everybody. I hope that helps. Uh, if you have any other questions, uh, let me know. I'll be glad to answer them for you. This is G-Bear reminding you thumbs up down there and subscribe and share g bear signing off <clears throat>